Let's take a look at some of the latest on our tropical storm Adelia, which is currently located just east of the Yucatan Peninsula, but we are seeing some strengthening and not only that, but the forecast does look more intense than it was just 24 hours ago. Out ahead of this storm, we have rather warm sea surface temperatures, reducing vertical wind shear. These are all ingredients that could come together to allow this storm system to not only upgrade to a hurricane, but even a category three, a major hurricane prior to landfall. And we want to continue to, of course, the watch the forecast here because this, as I mentioned, is moving over some of the warmest sea surface temperatures we have seen on record in this area of the Gulf of Mexico. It's 90 degrees plus. That is just fuel for the fire to allow for additional intensification here. Now, this storm system is continuing to cruise ahead. So the thing is, it's going to be moving at a pretty decent pace. And those winds will carry well inland, even over towards the first coast. I do expect hurricane strength winds to be seen, especially for some of our western areas. But for the west coast, the storm surge threat, those wind threats all being a major issue. If those hurricane watches in place up and down the Big Bend area, extending well inland Bay County, uh, Union, Bradford as well, even over towards Lake City, you still have those hurricane watches and I wouldn't be surprised if some of those do shift further towards the east, especially the tropical storm watches and warnings here. All right, look at the wind field. This is hurricane strength 50 knots, which is considered damaging winds. And then we have that uh, tropical storm strength wind field. And this is what I'm talking about. This winds are just going to be carried. Of course, the right front quadrant Tampa area probably going to get some of the uh, the brunt of this storm, especially storm surge could be rather high there. Uh, you have any friends or family in that area want to make sure the, you know, they're taking the proper precautions along the coast and it cruises inland here. But since it's moving at a pretty decent pace, those winds at least the damaging winds are going to carry well inland over towards the Jacksonville area across most of the first coast, even back towards the north into Waycross, southeastern areas of Georgia. And then you can see this kicks back towards uh, the coastal areas as well when the entire area at least seeing tropical storm strength winds too. So it's a pretty fast moving storm Wednesday throughout the day will be our stormiest weather for the Jacksonville area and even really most of northern Florida for that matter. This is showing 2 a.m. Wednesday early, early morning just towards the west of Tampa, and then it starts to see right around sunrise pre dawn. Uh, we start to see this near landfall across Big Bend. Catwin, one winds as far inland as Lake City with those power outages even possible towards the Jacks metro area. Also, we're talking about tornadoes too. Uh, we're going to be in the dirty side of the storm. A lot of those bands, tornado threats going to be up and down uh, the Florida Peninsula. This is what I was talking about the sea surface temperatures. These areas in the lighter pink. That's indicating 90 degrees or higher. So there's a lot of fuel for this storm system to pick up as it moves towards the north. Watch this. This is the C-130s, our hurricane hunters, our good uh, fine servicemen out of the Air Force, just flew out of Biloxi, Mississippi, Keesler Air Force Base there. They just found a wind uh, 77 miles per hour. That is hurricane strength. So as of 9 a.m. Eastern time here, uh, this is still a tropical storm, but I would not be surprised if in the very near future this does get upgraded to a hurricane. Look at our guidance just showing that symmetrical shape as this comes towards the north, uh, really indicating the models are picking up on that intensification. Watch this as it pushes on by, though. Look at places like Gainesville could be seeing. Oh, wow, that's uh, some rather strong winds. And that's what I'm talking about. These winds getting carried inland with down trees and power outages and things like that being one of the main issues. The spaghetti plots are model consensus as far as where this is going to be going. Uh, pretty in line. This hasn't shifted too much over the past 48 hours. Uh, the intensity is strengthened, but as far as where it's going to go, yeah, that's pretty concrete. We have a little trough kind of digging in from the north. You have that high pressure area back towards the east kind of getting funneled right in there. So our confidence continues to remain that it is going to be making that landfall in the Big Bend area for our western counties of the first coast. Cat one gust for sure. Roof damage, down trees, the passing heavy rainfall, wind gusts over 65 miles per hour in Duval County, including Jacksonville. Very well possible too. This is one thing I do want to note the tornado threat. That's why we're going to be here 24 hours throughout the day here on Tuesday through Wednesday, watching the storm as that threat does continue to kick up. And for our East Coast, especially for southeastern Georgia, talking about Glen Camden, Nassau County, it is a super moon Wednesday. So you have that water level rise that naturally takes place, but then at the same time, a southerly wind's going to be kicking in. And I do think some of these inlets 
could be looking at some tidal flooding as well. Be sure to continue to check back in at firstcoastnews.com for the latest updates. And of course, here at First Coast News, there's a look at the time, especially at 5 and 11 o'clock. That's when we get those new updates as far as the cone and as far as the latest information on the intensity of this storm. I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta.